The Bible actually talks about socialism and communism. In fact, it endorses it. You just heard it right there in Acts chapter 2. Oh, uh, really? Let's take a look at those verses, shall we? This from Art Lindsley, Acts 2 through 5, portrays what? A spirit of communal sharing rather than an actual commune. Why? The people didn't sell everything they owned to legal title as those typically do in a commune. Words have meanings, don't you know? What was going on in that passage was not communal living. It certainly wasn't communism. It was selling some stuff as people had need, not selling everything and then giving it over to somebody to run. Now, let's dive in deeper to the text, shall we? This is evidenced by the imperfect verbs used throughout the passages. Hey, imperfect verbs, we talk about that and it's not Greek to me, available at wretched.tv. This is why knowing a little bit of Greek is really important. Craig Blomberg says verses 43 through 47 in chapter 2 are dominated by a highly marked imperfect tense verbs, huh? Whereas one normally expect eris, they are once for all actions as opposed to ongoing, in a historical narrative. There is no once for all divestiture of property in view here, but periodic acts of charity as needs arose. You get all of that from the Greek language. The Greek language, the verb tense, very important in Greek. A lot of information smashed into it. And what Craig Blomberg, he's a good Greek scholar, he points out that the tense indicates this wasn't something that was an ongoing sort of affair, but it was an occasional deal. Does that sound like communism or socialism to you? It's not. Diving in deeper to the text, the NIV translation of Acts 4, 34b through 35 says, quote, from time to time, those who owned land or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales and put it at the apostles' feet. They brought out the Greek translation. From time to time, people who own land, they would sell it. From time to time. Jim Wallace, that's not socialism. Let's keep diving in, shall we? This was not a one-time divesture of one's possessions. The theme, according to need, reappears too. Interestingly, what does not appear in this paragraph is any statement of complete equality among believers. What is communism? Complete equality. That's what socialism does. There shouldn't be rich and poor. There should be equality. God is okay with rich and poor. If, here's the big if, if the rich aren't doing bad things, illegal things, hurting people, causing them to have poor wages and starve, God doesn't like that. But God most certainly is okay with different strata in society. There are rich and poor. Some are born into rich families. His sovereignty tells us that. Some are born into poor. The issue isn't, is God okay with that? The question is, how do we behave in our strata? It's typical for us to look at the rich people and go, hey, don't be treating the poor people that way. But we also need to remember sinning can go the opposite direction. And if poor people are sinfully coveting and demanding, hey, the stuff that you legally earned, I want some of that government. Get it for me. That's called stealing. That's called sinning. Let's get back to Acts, shall we? In Acts chapter 5, Ananias, you know this story, he sold a piece of property and kept a portion of the proceeds for himself and his wife Sapphira. The problem was not that they were required to sell their possessions and give all of the proceeds of their land to the apostles, but that Ananias lied about the true price he received from the land. So Peter points out that he could give or he could keep the the money as he saw fit, but he still lied to Peter and the Holy Spirit. This is very, very clear that what was going on in this little community, the early Christians in the book of Acts was not communism or socialism. If Peter was a communist or if he were a so, I guess it should have been were in both instances. If he were a socialist, he would have said, hey, you know better, comrade, you must sell everything. I'll take care of it from here. I'll distribute it the way that I see fit. He didn't do that. Instead, he said, you didn't have to do this. You could have sold it. You could have kept it. You could do whatever you want to do because you have property rights. How do I know that lines up with the scriptures? Because we are not supposed to covet somebody else's land. We shouldn't covet their stuff. In other words, they have a right to ownership. Peter makes it clear. Was socialism and communism the modus operandi of the early church, 
Certainly not. But there is more in our text. Socialism implies coercion by the state. But these early believers contributed their goods freely. There's no mention of the state running stuff in Acts 2 through 5. Elsewhere in scripture, we see that Christians are even instructed to give in just this manner, freely from the heart, because God loves a cheerful giver. Even if the believers sold all of their possessions and redistributed them among the community, this still would not prove socialism is biblical, since the state is not the agent selling property to those in need in the book of Acts. There is also plenty of indication that private property rights were still in effect. Next time somebody tries to tell you, hey, communism, socialism, that was going on in the book of Acts, you point out, this information to them. Finally, from Art Lindsley, to prove Acts 2 through 5 it com that it commands socialism, you would have to show that this historical precedent is a mandatory pre, not a D, but a prescription for all later Christians. The fact that some Christians shared all things does not constitute a command that all Christians for all time should follow their example because it is not clearly taught in passages of scripture elsewhere. The book of Acts predominantly is descriptive. It describes what was going on, but that doesn't mean it's prescribed. Just because the book of Acts recounts something that happened, that does not mean that God is telling you, you have to do it the same way. It is an historical narrative, just like the Gospels. And so when we read Matthew, Mark, Luke, John in the book of Acts, we need to be very careful that just because we see it demonstrated there doesn't mean we need to do it here. And that is exactly the case in the book of Acts when it comes to communal living, communism, socialism, and capitalism. Just because we see sort of kind of some aspects of communism slash socialism, but certainly not identical. The government wasn't even involved. That does not mean that it is prescribed for today.